I'm Emily Buren. I'm the Senior Creative Partnership Associate at Moment. Hey, it's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, we are going to have a moment with a creative partner, Miss Emily. She's going to give us the game about moment, moment.co for those of you who say, oh, I just want to get to the, what's the website? What's the company? She's going to give you the game on moment. It's why it's something you may want to do, especially for those of you who are creators. And I think all of us are creators. All of us have a voice and we have a story and we should share it. So welcome to the show, Emily. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. So give us the game because me representing influencers for the majority of my, my days, um, you know, I'm always hearing about some new software, some new hardware. So I want you to tell the people so I can send this directly to clients and say, this is what moment is. For sure. Moment is an amazing platform. It's a ticketed virtual events platform. And we're working with all different types of creators, whether that be podcasters, YouTubers, or artists. It was founded in 2019. So even before the pandemic, we anticipated this need for more events in the live stream space. And of course, once the pandemic hit, it really took off. And we really managed to sustain this business even as the world has shifted. And I think now people are so excited to go back to in-person events, but also virtual events have become a staple in the business. You're not really seen as a replacement anymore for live shows, but more something supplemental. And especially, you know, if you're a creator that has an existing format that can really easily be translated and eventized into this type of uh, model, it can be so successful and really just um, open up a whole new revenue stream, which is amazing. And of course, creators are always looking to do that and diversify their business. So it's a really great thing for, for creators to be able to access. And we built the platform to be as creator friendly as possible. You know, everything from having creators own 100% of their content IP. So if they want to take that content out after they premiere it on Moment and continue to monetize it elsewhere, you know, we really welcome that and want them to continue to do so. They also own 100% of their ticket buyer data. So all the emails and postal codes that we collect about their fans is something that they get to use and, and utilize for future marketing purposes. And we give them a lot of support on the platform. And one of the best things is that we currently have structured the business so that they take home 100% of the gross revenue, which is super rare in the creator monetization space. So we're really just trying to empower creators to generate meaningful revenue and open a place where they can connect with their audience in an engaging and meaningful way. And also just provide something new and fun. I think that's uh, one thing we're always hearing from creators is that it's just a really fun thing to do. And of course, there's a good financial return at the end of it. So kind of that balance of both. Okay. And it sounds like a, a remix of, you know, so many different platforms where you guys looked and said, oh, craters hate this, craters. And a remix, I say that, and I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going to kind of pick on you, Emily, because you went to USC. So <laughs> you, 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 you get, you know, um, themes like that, that fight song, right? Yes. Um, and even that fight song, can be remixed to the point where, and you might not be able to hear it, but the guests will be able to, the, the, the people can hear it. Anything can be remixed. And as a Stanford fan, <laughs> we love a good remix of that USC, any song. But can you tell the people, like with, you know, how does Moment make money or how does Moment, what's in it for Moment? Because if they get 100% of everything, does that mean it's going to cost me a big amount of money in the beginning? So I'm paying Moment. How much? Quanto cuesta? Yeah, great question. So we don't have a talent fee where, you know, people have to pay X, Y, and Z to join the platform. That's really not part of our ethos. The only thing we have in place is this 15% service fee that gets applied on top of any transaction on the platform, whether that be a ticket sale or a merchandise item. And it's actually similar to other, other companies in the ticketing industry, you know, like a ticket master, if you go on there to buy a concert ticket, you're always going to have some type of service that, as opposed to a rev share model where creators would have to give us you know, a certain percentage of their earnings. I think it's just a little bit more fair and, and similar to other companies in the space. And is this something um, only for maybe America and the West or can folks in Asia, Africa and beyond, can they also have a moment? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we're really designed for the global creator community and for their global audience. So we've worked with creators all over the world, have hosted events with virtual audiences from all over the world. So I think that's part of the, the benefit of doing something in the virtual space, because if a creator does an in-person event, especially if it's just a one-off, you know, it's not a global tour, it's just a, a one event in one city, a lot of their fans aren't going to be able to join and participate, and, you know, whether that be for logistical reasons or financial reasons. So Doing these virtual events, they also sit at a lower price point than perhaps our in-person event counterparts. So tickets are often priced 10 to $15 range. We don't want to price out anyone's fans. We want to just have it be affordable, accessible, and just really inclusive of their overall community. Is there any limit? And I ask that because um, African creators last year, um, especially those in Kenya, got hit in, in other other countries got hit with like a double tax where you got a tax from YouTube, then their country was already, you know, taxing them. And it was like, now we're making even less and our CPM isn't as high. So if I want to kind of break the game, can I keep having moments? So if I do that even daily and have a daily moment, because if I knock out YouTube, which right now is the only player for many of them, for their audience, could they always have a moment every day if they wanted to? In theory, they could. I mean, our platform could definitely support that. However, we actually tend to encourage um, a less is more model because I think a lot of the you know players in the content space, like a TikTok, Instagram, even to some extent YouTube now, especially with shorts, kind of encourage that twenty four seven model when it comes to content. You know, if you really want to be um, seeing the best results and monetizing, most creators often feel pressure to be posting all the time and just engaging with that community constantly. I think that's great for those platforms. But the flip side of that is that it can kind of lead to burnout, you know, oversaturation of the fans. They feel kind of flooded with all this information. Um, so I think on our platform, one of the nice things is that because it's event-based, it means that they're not having to do it and think about it all the time. You know, they really can just put their energy towards it and promote it around the time when they're doing an event. But after the event's done, they can put it on a shelf and you know, move on to the next thing. And then when the time is right, start prepping for the next event. So most creators that are doing repeat moments are doing them on a quarterly, biannually basis. For some type of creators, it might make sense to look at a monthly or bi-monthly model, um, but most are really doing them quarterly, which I think is great because it'll give them time to rest and recharge in between, but it also allows time for that fan anticipation to build up. You know, so they're not, they don't feel like, oh, well, why would I join today if I know I can just join tomorrow? It sort of adds to the exclusivity factor of these. Does Moment have a community give back that they're doing or that they plan on doing in the future? So we're not currently doing any type of model where we're donating X, Y, and Z of our proceeds uh, to, you know, a charity or a nonprofit organization. We are quite an early stage startup, but I'm sure that's something we would, you know, love to explore in the future when the time is right. Okay. Okay. And, you know, I just, everybody always is like, hey, how can we give back? And I think sometimes the give back is the new software with everything coming with Web3 and just, you know, being able to have people have access to some of these platforms are very exclusive. You have to have so many subscribers. Let me ask, you know, do you have, what's the viewership? Who's the who can get in? Do you need 10,000 subscribers, a million views, 4,000 watch hours? What do you need? Yeah, so we actually don't currently have a threshold of, of you know, subscriber count, follower count, and all of that. Um, just because it's, we really don't see that it's so much about, you know, the number. Of course, if they, someone has millions and millions of, of subscribers, we can kind of predict that they'll do well. However, it's really not about that. It's more about the core fans and, and having people that are really dedicated, that are coming back you know, video after video, podcast after podcast, and tuning in. Um, and it's those core fans that we see that no matter what they do are driving a lot of the revenue for creators and their overall business. So we're really trying to empower creators to cultivate that relationship with those core fans, which is why we do things like providing 100% of the ticket buyer data. So now they have direct communication to those people. But uh, that was kind of long-winded way of answering your question that no, we don't have a threshold because you know we've seen smaller podcasts be super successful or, or smaller creators. And I think that just goes to show that you know it's just about um, the community that they built and that relationship they've cultivated. And you guys have some great names on promo. I, I hate to name drop because everybody does it and I find it to be very uh, LA-ish and I'm being from the Bay Area. 
um, I just choose not to, to go there. But if you guys go on moment.co, you'll see the promos of some big names, um, you know, and, and I say the Bay Area, and I know you two are from the Bay. That's why I'm like, why didn't she go to Stanford instead of USA? <laughs> but but um, I, I, I do have, you know, one personal question for you. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of uh, a learning lesson for people because you went to a great school in the Bay Area, um, you know, the head, uh, what was it, the head Royce school. Yes. Um, would you say for the parents and, the, and, and of the influencers right now, influencers are so busy and I homeschool and people are always asking, how do you do that? What would you say about private education right now? I'm just curious. I have to throw that out there because was it worth it? Yeah, I mean, I obviously don't really know anything else. So I, it's hard to have that point of comparison, but I really appreciate the experience. I think from a young age, actually even before I attended Head Royce, I attended a very, very small elementary middle school of like 13 kids in every grade. And it provided the opportunity, you know, from the age of 10 years old to learn Latin, art history, music history, and just get exposure to a lot of, um, you know, history and culture that I feel like isn't always present in education and certainly even within private schools isn't always there. Um, so just having that really close classroom experience, you know, cultivated in me things like an interest in love in Shakespeare and other things that I think perhaps I wouldn't have had as much exposure to, um, or like Gilbert and Sullivan operettas, for example, just those small things that I think often aren't taught or, or kind of uh, glossed over sometimes, but I, loved the experience i thought it was great i think um there's can be big advantages in small classroom settings and certainly by the time i, I went to usc that's such a great school if people are interested in getting into the entertainment industry um not just because of the support that the school provides and kind of have having access to you know people from all walks of life that kind of share common interests but i think just the opportunities of you know, being in Los Angeles or any big city, really. I mean, certainly when I was in school, I was taking every opportunity to intern and put myself out there and just learn as much as I could on the ground. And I think to some extent that's helped me the most overall, just having that experience um, from an earlier age of just, you know, getting a taste of what the workforce is like. You guys, we just had a moment and Emily didn't charge you a ticket price. So if you want to know more, you're going to have to wait for her moment and then buy a ticket. Let the people know that last thing <clears throat> is with Moment, because that you have such big names and the, the content is so good. Um, are there any requirements on, you know, camera, audio, because there are some people who are just filming off, you know, phones or off the Osmo pocket and they're saying, well, am I even ready for Moment? Is it for anybody at any quality or does your quality have to be set at a certain level? Yeah, so we definitely like to have the events feel very high quality because I think that helps differentiate it from the content that they're already putting out, you know, on YouTube or TikTok. Um, I think, you know, if, if you look at creators who are doing live streams on TikTok and Instagram, they have a very casual feel to them. You know, they're done on an iPhone and they're kind of in the moment, which I think is great. And, and that's very successful on those platforms. But for us, we really like to have everything feel elevated because I think that helps convey that this is a premium content experience. I mean, sort of the challenge in doing moments overall for creators is differentiating it from their fans of what they're already getting for free and, and kind of giving them the, the value proposition of why they should um, pay to join this event. So I think having everything feel high quality just lends itself well to conveying that message. And, you know, our team is, is really helpful at providing some um, different guidelines. We don't have a requirement of you have to have X, Y, and Z camera or this many um, this many cameras to film, but so we definitely can work with people depending on what resources we have. We understand that not everyone has access to the same items, but we kind of work with what they have and, you know, if they want to put extra money into it, into making it look really great, um, you know, that's always appreciated, but, you know, we work with what they have and we definitely want it to look and feel really good. You guys have had your moment. Emily, if you have any last words, let the people know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a great platform, you know, whether you're a fan and kind of wanting to participate in that way, or you're a creator and you know, wanting to open a new revenue stream, or just find a really fun new opportunity to try something new. It's an awesome platform. Uh, check out our website, see what upcoming events we have, and, and feel free to join. You guys have been given the game. Make sure that you share it with somebody. It will change their life. Be blessed, you guys. Are you tired of the rat race in America? 
Are you ready to visit the motherland to relax and rejuvenate? Are you ready to explore all that Africa has to offer? Then check out the brand new Diversified Game Academy course, Prepare for My First Trip to Africa. Are you worried about being able to afford the trip? We got you. We will show you how to travel either on a budget or as a baller. Learn how to stress the value of the USD. Did you know that 100 United States dollars is worth over 1,000 South African Rand or 10,000 Kenyan shillings or 54,250 West African CFA? Are you worried about taking your kids? Get the game from Kellen Cash, a bona fide world traveler, having traveled to almost 20 countries, several of those in Africa. Get the game on taking your kids on their first trips. Learn how to find the best tickets, get the visas, and plan your own adventures in Africa. Don't let Eddie Murphy have all the fun. Plan your own coming to Africa trip starring you, produced by you, and featuring you. If you are ready for a life-changing experience, sign up for our course today, Diversified Game Academy. Get prepared and purchase at DiversifiedGame.com.